Hey everyone, it is Sunday, August 14th. The time right now is 1.25 p.m. and the temperature is around 24 degrees Celsius. And this here is Bloor Street West. And that's a look to the east. And that is the Royal Ontario Museum. And for this one, I'm going to make my way over to, I think, either Sherburne Station or Castle Frank Station, probably Sherburne. So I'll be heading east along Bloor Street here. And I think at Bay, I'll go south down to Charles Street. And then I'll walk east over to Young. And maybe make my way down to Wellesley and I'll take that over to Sherburne. I'm not entirely sure. just finished up recording a video where I started this one. I was thinking I would only make one, but I'm feeling a little better than I thought I would be. There's a Burberry. There's a lot of high-end retailers in this area. I was on the Amsterdam equivalent of the Mink Mile. That's a street, I think, called PC Hoofstrat. I recorded a video along there. I'm not sure if I'll get around to posting that at some point. an entrance to Winners and Home Sense. So something is going on with this building. I saw the scaffolding and I was thinking maybe they're finally doing something with this old pottery barn. Maybe there's an entirely new facade on the way for that building. And just to the north of here is Yorkville Village. Things seem pretty quiet in the city on this weekend. This is my first time going out and actually walking around the city in over a couple of weeks. And Bel Air Street here will lead you into Yorkville Village and there it's one of those new electric Mustangs. I don't know if I've ever seen one in the wild yet. Well, I think the term Mustang just loosely applies to that particular vehicle.
So here is Bay Street. I think there's a Lamborghini making its way in this direction. It's not too uncommon for this neck of the woods in the city. There it is. Pretty cool sighting. And this is south on Bay Street. Almost directly into the sun. Italy with Aperol. I had my first ever Aperol spritz in Amsterdam. I've recorded a couple of scooter rides since I came back. But this is my first time getting out on foot. I certainly feel much better. The only nagging symptom seems to be the fatigue. I've got energy, I find, till about 1 or 2 p.m. And it feels like the lights turn off. That's one of the reasons I came out earlier today. I was like, if I'm going to do this and get some videos in, I'm going to have to do it while I still have some energy. So here is Charles Street West. So I'll take this and connect over to Young. I'm going to lead you through the University of Toronto to the west of here. This is not a route I planned for, I'm just making it up. I just thought of it right before I started recording it. So I'm hoping to tackle some more ambitious routes. And just create a lot more content in the coming weeks. Certainly wasn't planning on taking a full week off after I returned. There's the economy house. I like how this guy waited until I was about to walk in front of him before he turned. Eight mile Detroit style pizza. This place, Seven West, has been there for a while. This used to be a big second cup. 
It's a Canadian cafe, kind of the equivalent of Starbucks. And there used to be a Starbucks across the street there too, where the Tika house is now located. And it's now south down the west side of Young Street. There's a look north. And that's a look up at One Bloor East, which will soon be joined by one bloor west on the other side of the street. And at last check, this building on the right here. It's owned by the Church of Scientology. We got a phone call coming in. Hello? And we're back. Sorry about that. It is now 1.41 p.m. I am having fiber optic internet installed. I was supposed to get that done last week, but I had to reschedule as I was isolating at home. And I didn't think it would be appropriate to have a technician come into my home, so that's been rearranged for later on this week. That was the purpose of that phone call. So, back to the walk. And this here is Irwin Avenue. We've got a red light to wait for here. Butter chicken roti. Doesn't look like they're getting much use out of this patio. There's a place, the Ethiopian house, where good dining and good friends meet. They've got a couple of people out on their patio. So I'm quite looking forward to getting fiber internet. My current upload speed is 30 and my download is 1,000. When you're uploading 40, 50, 60 gig files every day, having to wait three hours for them to upload isn't ideal. So my new upload speed will be, I think, 960. I wonder what kind of retail is going in there. Looks like there's a place called the Pastry House. 
with the condification of Young Street. We're losing a lot of the smaller, more interesting retail. Yeah, it's just gonna get replaced with this larger kind of generic corporate retail. And even here, they preserve this old building. Oh, here comes a pretty cool car. And what do we get? We get Aroma, Espresso Bar, and a Royal Bank. Not that a cafe is a particularly bad thing. I think Young Street is pretty unique and that has a lot of shops like this. Although they're becoming more of a dying breed. And here is Wellesley Street. Now it's on to the east side of downtown. And that is Wellesley Station on the left. I remember watching some UFC events a long time ago with that fox in the fiddle. That's not something you see a whole lot of. Someone walking around with golf clubs, but there's the Don Valley course. Just north of York Mill Station. There's also Dentonia at Victoria Park. Wouldn't be surprised to see some of the golf courses in the city start to disappear. Just given how much land prices are going up and the housing crisis. And if you go on Google Maps and take a look at satellite view, it's quite surprising just how many golf courses there are here. I had a really interesting camera on him. Thank you. 
And this is Church in Wellesley. There's a lot of Cafe Tio sidewalk patios to the along church just to the south of here. Grapefruit. I just walked up by and I have no idea what kind of store that is. Oh, this is really cool. I'm digging in front of this building. And it's nice to see red brick used instead of just another glass box. Although I spoke too soon. There's glass up there, but it looks neat. They've all got balconies, it looks like. I'm wondering if it stopped me to take that phone call. It's gonna cost me $3.20. As you have two hours to tap back into the system from when you first tapped on. And being the good citizen that I am, I tapped onto that shuttle bus. Even though I think most people don't tap on when they get on shuttle buses. Can't really blame them. I don't remember exactly when that was, but I think we're getting very close to two hours. Here's Jarvis Street and I did a walk up Jarvis Street a few weeks ago. East side of downtown doesn't have the best reputation, but I've never found anything that bad about it. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to live in this area. And there is the Keg Mansion. So since I'll be sitting around all day waiting for a technician to come, I think that would be a good chance to plan some videos out. If you have any requests or ideas for videos, let me know down in the comments. If I were to continue east on Wellesley here, that would take me into Cabbage Town. I think that would be a, an idea for a future one. Upper Jarvis. This is the Upper Jarvis neighborhood.
I think coming up next is Sherburn Street, so I'm going to turn north and pop into Sherburn Station. I think the gas tank is getting empty. Normally on Sundays, I do a live stream on my second channel. Well, I told myself if I wasn't feeling all that energetic, I would take this week off. There's the 94A Wellesley bus. And there's a 506 Carlton. That's normally a streetcar, and that is diverting. I wonder what the cause of that diversion is. And there's another one behind it that's diverting and turning as well. Well, this is north on Sherburn Street. And that's the St. Jamestown neighborhood off in that direction. There's a Toronto Library and a community center. I can't say I'm a big fan of how the community center meets the street. I think for a public institution, that's kind of a lost opportunity to have some retail at street front. And it would give the owners of that building another revenue source. But not exactly Gil Penalosa. So I'm not sure what the real reason for such a boring facade is. He's a very well qualified candidate who's running for mayor. And I'm looking forward to showing him my support. Sherburn is such an interesting street. A lot like Jarvis, it seems to lack a cohesive feel to it. And this is Isabella Street coming up. I think I came up Sherburn, or at least this part of it, and the first video I recorded since coming back, although that was an e-scooter ride. It's always different when you're exploring an area by foot. I think I can feel my voice starting to go.
and a look into St. Jamestown, perhaps an updated video through there is due. This is Linden Street, so we're almost at Blur Street. Just two more blocks to the north of here. And this was the scene of the most expensive residential relocation in Canadian history. This house here was moved to make way for this condo. It's the old James Cooper house. Originally dating back to 1881. I think it cost a few million dollars just to move it within the same lot. And those homes will be goners pretty soon. And there is Sherburn Station, which was closed earlier today. I think while they had Line 2 closed between St. George and Broadview due to work being done on the Prince Edward Viaduct, I believe Sherburn Station was not open during that closure. And neither was Bay Station. And they were supposed to run shuttle buses till noon, but they were actually running them well after that. But here we go. We are back up to Blue Street. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Sorry for the hoarseness of my voice. I'm very much still trying to get back into the swing of things. There's Blur Street. So let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you wish to support the channel, there's links to Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there's a super thanks button appearing below these videos. Now it's time to go find out if I have to pay a whole other fare. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.